Welcome to Secrets from the Saddle podcast. I'm Sylvie Dao, your host, fellow cyclist, bike club founder, cycling coach, bike race junkie, just truly super passionate about cycling. My journey with cycling started 20 years ago when I opened a spin studio, started a women's race team, and founded a women's only cycling club called Cycle Fit Chicks. I'm super thrilled to reveal all aspects that make the world of cycling operate. I'm so excited to be able to bring you interesting people from around the world, pro cyclists, recreational cyclists, coaches, event organizers, bike shop owners, everything and everyone you need to know or ever wondered about when it comes to cycling. I know you'll enjoy this episode. All right, what's up, everyone? This is Sylvie, your host from Secrets from the Saddle All Things Cycling Podcast, coming to you with her coach's corner. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. It is meditation and the athlete. So before we get into that, this is also hugely inspired by the fact that it's Bell Let's Talk. Uh, for mental health this week. And it's a shame that it's only one day a year because honestly, it should be at least once a month. And I was had the utmost pleasure to interview pro athlete, um, gravel rider, Taylor Lindine uh, on his mental health issues. So it just sort of seems, you know, kind of in line of what's been going on, and also maybe my own uh, feelings about it. So meditation, the athlete. But before we get started, what I would love to talk to you about first is the fact that, oh my God, January has just flown by, has it not? I have hoped you have enjoyed the episodes that I brought to you about the cycling events. They have like really been motivational and inspiring. And, you know, I think I've maybe have just filled up my next 10 years of events. What do you think? Um, it's just, yeah, there's just so many things to do with such little time, honestly. Um, so I've been super inspired about that. And the thing is that guys and girls is that I am now you're going to be hearing, continuing to get episodes about um, cycling events over the next couple of months because literally uh, the people that I've um, been chatting with or asked to be on the podcast are now coming back and booking. So you'll be hearing and um, different episodes along the way uh, of different uh, events that are global. So that's super exciting. Um, and Don't forget, I always have free downloads for you, cycling related, um, at askcoachsylvie.com. And this is going to be huge, everybody. So better make sure that you are subscribed to whatever uh, podcast platform because in our next month, we're going to start a contest going towards celebrating our 200th episode, which is in March. I cannot believe it. Um, Putting out three episodes a week has been fun and challenging. And literally, it's taken me almost a year to find a groove around this, (laughs) which I'm really grateful for. Um, But so make sure that you are tuned in because starting in February, we're going to be doing little challenges to get give out prizes um, and just a lead up to our 200th celebration. So I'm super excited and stoked about that. All right. Now let's get into meditation and the athlete. I have 10 reasons to start meditating. Now, I don't know. I think you've probably been listening more and more athletes are turning to meditation to deal with the stresses of um, competition, um, especially if you're at the high level or not even like you could be my like my myself, um, just a busy mom entrepreneur and just needing the time to kind of chill and put everything into perspective. 
So you don't have to be a high level athlete, but there's probably way more, you know, relying on you, like way more people rely on you than maybe rely on me and bigger expectations than say the ones I put on myself. But anyways, they still have an impact over time. Now, We've got 10 reasons and we're going to start with the first one and literally, oh yes, before we can get it, I'm going to give you some st statistics. So I had to go in and, and, and look at some st statistics around meditation. So here it is. So research, you know, is moving more towards us being more physical and emotional and science is starting to support how meditation has been affecting our bodies in a positive way and helping with, um, you know, health in general. So here we go. 200 to 500 million people meditate. So I guess that's like globally. And I'm assuming they've probably taken this from all the apps and um, retreats and things like that, possibly to get these statistics. Here's a 16% of women meditate, 12% of men, and then 7% of children, which I found that kind of interesting. Um, I know that when I've um, asked my kids to sit and meditate with me, um, obviously my daughter is way more into it than my son, but they both sit there and indulge me for five minutes, which is, you know, pretty nice. Um, here are the age groups. Here's like 18 to 44, as uh, 13% meditate, 45 to 64%, uh, 60, age 64, 16%, and above 65 is 13%. So kind of like the mid range is, is the highest. Now, meditation has been reduced shown to reduce depression relapse by 12 percent so there's one really big reason to sit and start you know looking into it i have just um oh and one last one 43 percent increase in telomeres which if you don't know what telomeres are they are, if you think, you know, everybody knows what your DNA strand is. So that's the, that's what we're basically made out of. So at the end of each DNA strand are little caps. They kind of look like the end of shoelaces. And those are our telomeres. Now, when we get sick and age, or basically as soon as we came out, they start aging, right? Because we start getting older. And so those telomeres start aging and breaking down. It's not until that fact that we get sick or create, uh, bring on a disease that they really start accelerating the breaking down part. Now, it has been shown that you can support your telomeres and rebuild. So that's a whole other subject, but um, I'm really grateful that the company that I get my supplements for, they actually have a telomere support and it helps with slowing down aging, literally. And it has been shown that supporting your telomeres scientifically, that it does slow them down. So that's super cool. Go Google that. Now back to meditation and um, God, I was going to share something with you, but now I totally forgot. Anyways, it'll come back to me. So number one, we got 10 reasons to start meditating. And I, I think they all like just wrap themselves back to stress because the first one is reducing stress. So, you know, um, I was never one into meditating. Uh, when I got into um, this health and wellness company, I was... Uh, I learned a lot about personal development and, you know, a lot of talk about meditation. And so I was like, okay, you know, what is this? What is it really? And um, it is just like a calming aspect. So if you were to start 
with, say, five minutes. Like, that's all I could handle. Even less than that. Like, sitting still, oh my God. But over time, I was, like, even now, like this week, I have a bunch of people who are doing, like, this little meditation challenge. And what we are doing is um, basically we downloaded a couple apps. So I'll share the apps with you. One is Insight Timer. And it's you can go in and for me, self-guided meditation works the best. That I can just listen to someone talk to me, um, whether it's affirmations or just calming down with with like calm conversation. Um, it's just the best for me to be able to, you know, just let go of everything and stop thinking about everything and just be one with calmness. Um, so if you're thinking, like if you have a super stressful job, or let's just relate everything, I'm going to relate everything to the athlete, you know, you've got stress from work, family, training, competition. So how do you manage all of that? And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my God, I don't even have time to sit and meditate. You have time to sit and meditate. You can do that after a training session. You can do it before bed. You can do it first thing in the morning. And it's all it takes is five minutes. How many, how long do you spend scrolling on your phone? Scroll right to the meditation app and start it. <laughs> Cause that's kind of like what I'm doing in the morning. Sorry, I got to take some water there. Um, first thing is just like, oh my gosh, I can't, I didn't even want to touch my phone, but my meditation app is on it. So I got to touch it. And um, sometimes I don't even go to it, which is bad. But then, you know, I, I eventually make it to it. Now, here's something I was listening to a podcast and um, there was this gentleman on there talking about how he created, he developed stress-induced diabetes. Now, I'm not going to go into that, but that was crazy to me that he could have created that over time. It was over a couple of years. He was in an exceptionally stressful job, demanding uh, co-workers and boss, and he basically made himself severely sick um, to the point where, you know, as soon as he quit that job, <laughs> he actually got better which is usually what happens, right? So think about what it is that's causing all your stress. So meditation can really help you deal with that. Like, So next, number two, is increased happiness. So we know happiness doesn't happen overnight. It's not something that you develop. It's increasing the positive feeling. And I, I added in communication because, you know, if you're in a partnership, um, married, you know how communication kind of drops off the wayside because you're too busy dealing with everything else. And and then your your happiness slips because you you partnered with that person to be happy in the to begin with, right? To live out your life with them. And then it's kind of breaking down and you're getting less happy. So Increasing your happiness, I'm all in for that. And basically, I think you just got to let go of the ego at the same time and just sit down and force those communications. And I'm just talking to myself because that's what I got to do because I'm a really bad communicator. I knew that from my childhood. So as long as you know that, <laughs> you can try and deal with it. All right, number three, better sleep. We all know what we feel like when we haven't had a good night's sleep or haven't had multiple good night's sleeps. I know how I feel. I feel like shit. And, and, um, I've never, never experienced insomnia except for there was this one time, one time in my life. And I went through, it must've been like two full weeks where I, I had so much anxiety in my stomach that I could, I couldn't even 
calm down my heart. It was crazy. And I was just trying to pinpoint like where it was coming from and what was I thinking about that was causing so much of this anxiety that I could not relax enough to get a good night's sleep. I, you know, I eventually figured it out and it went back to communication. <laughs> Funny. Um, so lack of sleep can really wreak havoc on our bodies from a health standpoint. We all know that it increases stress with in stress is like the killer and <laughs> And it can bring on so many different bad things in your body. Now, number four. So if you want better sleep, there's in your sleep apps, there are apps for falling asleep. So I find that if I have a busy mind before I go to bed, and athletes usually do because there's all sorts of things you're thinking about, um, then it's good for me to read so an app might be good for you. But the thing is that you don't want to be going to bed with your phone. That's a, something you want to avoid. Um, and if you do, you want to make sure it's off. So it's kind of hard, right? You need your phone to listen to this app. However, you fall asleep listening to the app. So you can't really turn the phone off. And then all your notifications are still on. So Maybe you listen to it before you get to bed, like in the living room, and then you walk yourself up and go to bed. That may be a better idea. Now, number four is reduce blood pressure. Now, I all know like calming your body, reducing stress, so back to the stress, helps release tension, which then causes your blood pressure to drop. So if you're someone who like, you could just feel your blood pressure rise in certain situations. It's time to really like either ask somebody else to deal with it or um, create a way to handle it. Do you know what I'm saying? Number four, um, treatment for depression. Now, this is starting to become a really big topic in athletes. Um, the pressure... Uh, competition, training, um, you know, I think it's, it's also maybe spending a lot of time solo riding sometimes competitions, um, uh, is just like the whole emotional roller coaster because I know that, you know, I was talking to, to Taylor and, um, like as a competitor, you don't even have to be a competitor. You can be just competing or even training. People love the training because it puts them on that big high. You feel amazing. The endorphins are flowing, like happy mood. And then if you have stuff that needs to be dealt with in your body, like that uh, underlining stress that's been hidden for a little while, that's what brings that big crash down. And I experienced that when I went through divorce and um, I think I said this maybe in my last podcast episode that I was told by my therapist that I needed to choose between competing and running my business. I could not do both because I would literally have a nervous breakdown or an emotional breakdown or a breakdown period. So we had to, to you know, and at that time, like I didn't have these tools to deal with the emotional stress that I was going through. So this is actually something that science is supporting as a treatment for depression. So if you're, you know, if you're feeling that you're like dipping into a deep depressive state, sit down, open up an app, talk to somebody, listen to some positive affirmations because it's all that crap in your head that's telling that that's bringing you down, right? You need to reverse that, reverse it, put, listen to positivity every time that something negative comes into your head, like literally every time. All right. Next one is six, improve brain function. Well, who doesn't want to improve that, right? Bye-bye brain fog. Um, as an athlete, 
you know, making those critical decisions. You don't want to be foggy in the brain. You don't want to go into competition tired and lagging. Um, you know, you get, you get to exercise your brain, ex- you know, practice mindfulness, focus mind and emotions, you know, and kind of like, you know, removing that stress from the past and forgiving. Isn't that a hard one to forgive? Us women can never forgive or forget. Men, whatever. I don't like experience weird things with ex-boyfriends. Like, men are weird. Your best friend could, you know, like, steal money from you and you still like him. I don't get it. I had a boyfriend like that. Weird. Um, and uh, so, you know, improving brain function. Next one is number seven is pain reduction. Now, this is another thing that scientific, like science is more leaning towards, is that Zen meditation combined with pain management on being able to calm your body so you can deal with that painful place. So, you know, it's sometimes like your experience is something you have to sit back and just like calm yourself to release like some of the pain, like maybe you're having a a foot cramp or something. I think everybody's experienced that at one point in time. And, you know, for some people, they just want to be able to do it holistically and get rid of the meds. So meditation could be an avenue. Um, Three, losing and maintaining weight. So I like to say, you know, I took some, I took these points from a, a, a website. I'll share it with you, but I'm not entirely agreed with what they said about, you know, using meditation, mindfulness to change eating habits. Um, yes and no. Um, I think that's, you know, with a conscious decision to remove bad choices Um, I always like to work with my clients and use like um, a food tracker app so that they get to learn more about their food and then they're able to make these decisions as to what they want to eat and what they shouldn't eat um, or how to balance it all out, right? And then I strongly believe if we go back to managing and reducing stress, that reduces cortisol levels and thus will allow your body to calm enough to reduce and release fat. It all comes down to cortisol, right? If, you, if you're if you going to the doctor and you have high blood pressure, high stress, they're going to talk about cortisol. Cortisol is through the roof. You have to manage that. How are you going to manage that? You can, you know, um, get into your meditation, calm your body, exercise a little bit, um, and also change up your eating habits. So I don't know if meditation will help with that, but maybe it has helped somebody. Number nine is improve immune system. And I am totally all about the immune system. I always have, I work so hard on my body for the last 20, 25 years to be the healthiest version of me to make sure my, my stress is is managed. Um, I get good sleep. Um, I never had to worry about blood pressure, but, you know, manage my depression. I had one little stint of depression that I just, and it was very, very short. Um, It was five hours long. And I'll tell you, it was the scariest thing because when you've gone through something like that, you always know that it because you've passed over that threshold, you know, it could come back and happen again. That's the scary thing about letting yourself lapse into depression, letting yourself, allowing yourself. I'm going to say I allowed myself to do that. I allowed myself. It wasn't, it happened. I allowed myself to do that. I, because I snapped out of it after five hours. So here's what happened. I was with alone with the kids. Um, this is a number of years ago. Um, and my husband was away, uh, on a business trip for, I don't know, a week or two. 
and I just like fucking lost it. And I just, I, it was like say 10 in the morning and I just sat down beside the window and I didn't move. I didn't talk. I didn't do anything. I didn't leave that spot. And the kids are crying and they're coming up to me and they're screaming. They're asking me what's wrong. And I just, I couldn't move for five hours. I sat there and then I finally like, I think like I just fed them or something. So I almost didn't, (laughs) you know, like I was like, well, you know, like I don't have to worry about feeding them. But, but the, the fact is that I had allowed myself to step over the boundary of mental health and depression. And when you do that, you always know that there is a possibility that you can go back there. And it's the same with suicide. Because you've thought about it, you've considered it. And I say that because I tried to take my life twice when I was a teenager, simply for the fact of like, I was just so desperate to get the attention. And I'm not thinking of bad attention, the acknowledgement of my parents. You know, they're just so busy working. Uh, My mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad was a farmer. I was, you know, there's no communication in the family, very little love. Like, it was just all this, like, big snowball effect that I was like, well, if I do this, then, you know, they'll be able to acknowledge me. And uh, thankfully, I wasn't successful twice. I even tried to run away once (laughs) to the next village. But anyways, um, but the thing is that once you've passed over to that thought process, it's always, it's like one of those fresh things in your mind. It's crazy, but you don't know what I mean if, if you've been there. So, um, how do you get on that from like immune system? Anywho, um, so immune systems. Oh yeah. Um, you know, studies have shown that building up, uh, you know, being meditating helps increase your antibodies, which help prevent infection and disease. And hello, everybody. What's floating around here everywhere are viruses. Uh, lots of them, apparently. I mean, let's think about it. Before this whole pandemic, there was always somebody going to work with a cold that infected the whole floor, right? Bug flu, like, or like stomach flu, stomach bug, flu this, um, I don't know, gastro that. There's all these bugs going around, right? These viruses. But now we've got names for all of them. It's crazy. So if you're keeping your immune system super strong, then you're always going to be able to combat against that. I know for me, I have such strong a body awareness that I can tell you that when I feel like I'm getting sick, it starts with the back of the scratchiness in the throat. It's an indicator that I need more sleep and I need to, well, A, I haven't either. I've been burning the candle at both ends for too long, which is usually like a couple days. Like I don't let it go that far. But um, the fact that I can feel it coming on and that means I need to go to bed early. I need to get a good night's sleep, a couple good night's sleeps so that I will feel better and it'll go away. And it always does. I'm rarely, rarely sick ever. And, and, um, so I am all about the immune system because it keeps me healthy, keeps me positive. Um, I get good sleep. I have less stress. Um, you know, I manage my weight, all these things. It's just so good for you. I I eat healthy. Um, you know, so that's what's going to keep you healthy and, and without sickness. I'm completely convinced. And number 10 is treatment for anxiety. So if everything before that is off balance, like nine to one, all these things, 
how are you going to feel? Anxious, your mental health is going to be crappy. And, you know, what are you going to do? And we always think, you know, like that's what we're talking about meditating, sitting down, reducing, you know, um, reducing the stress, which is the first thing, which is going to help you with happiness, which is going to help you with sleep. And so you're not going to feel as anxious. You know, a lot of people are anxious because uh, they're worried too much. And here's another thing. Stop listening to the news. Just take care of yourself. And this is what I tell my husband all the time. I'm like, I don't care about everybody else. I care about us. I care about me. I care about my family. And that's all that matters. Because I can't take care of everybody else. You can't take care of everybody else. You have to take care of yourself. And if you're not taking care of yourself, then who's going to suffer? Your kids, right? Your relationship. You. And then what do you have to do? You're going to have to crawl yourself out of that hole that you've gotten yourself into. So for me, it's better that I put the work in now, right? It's like gaining a bunch of weight. Why would you do that to yourself? What is prompting you to do that? Why do you feel that you need to let yourself go. I don't say you're going to let yourself go because it takes so much more work to get back to where you want to be. Right. And in the meantime, you're creating anxiety. You're getting depressed. You have shitty sleep. Your happiness is down the tubes. Your stress is high. Your pain, I don't know, your, your immune system's shitty. You're getting sick right? Is it really worth it? Like, is it really worth it over putting the time in to build a strong, healthy body? So anyways, we got the off the, the athlete topic, but you know, athletes, they have to deal with all this stuff as well. So with that guys, I hope you got a couple good tips there. Um, it is something that is really on the forefront of everybody's minds these days. And, um, you know, there is help out there. We all know that. Bell, let's talk. Um, there's so many um, apps you can use. There's Facebook groups. Find yourself a positive tribe of people. They're going to lift you up instead of tear you down. Maybe you need to get rid of some friends. Not literally, but just don't hang out with them anymore. Find a place or a group that's positive, moving forward. Um, you know, um, maybe reduce conversations with negative family members. <laughs> you know, there's there's a lot of things you can implement. Um, get hobbies. Oh my gosh, if meditation doesn't work, um, and you find that you're you know you're depressed because you're sitting home alone. Well, get into some hobbies. Um, you know, a lot of great people can be found in hobbies, like different hobbies, and they take up some of your time, which is good, right? Less time thinking about depressive, worrying situations, the better, right? Zone out, get into puzzles. I don't know. There's so many cool things to get into. It's impossible to say that, you know, there isn't anything that you like. This is the time to go find something new. So with that, I just want to say thank you for listening. Um, love to hear from you. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and the podcast on Instagram. So Secrets from the Saddle podcast and myself, Sylvie Doe underscore cyclist and looking for more written reviews. So if you're so inclined to go in and leave me a review, that would be absolutely amazing. I will give you a shout out for sure. And um, also a five star. So with that, have an amazing weekend. And um, if you see this on YouTube, I'd love to know what 
um, meditation app you are using. I'll share the two that I have downloaded as of recommendations from friends. Um, and uh, yeah, let's do this together. Take care, guys, and have an amazing day. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on the Secrets from the Saddle podcast learning more about sighting people, places, and things that make cycling such an exciting sport. I am so glad you stopped by today. Please leave me a review if you feel so moved to do so. I would love to hear your feedback. And if you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it, I would be forever grateful. Also, if you could please leave me a review, if you feel so moved, by going to iTunes and leaving me an honest thought and an honest comment, telling me what you think, and most importantly, tell me what you'd like to hear more of. It would really help me to bring more great, inspiring cycling stories to you. Until then, have an amazing day. Make sure you ride your bike. And don't forget to visit my YouTube channel if you'd like to see the full version of this podcast live.